I've tried to sort of give you an overview of the things that I've been working on and also the ways in which I've tried to advance uh, equality in this country and uh, really advance a more uh, wonderful world for all of us. And wherever I, I go, I talk about people's rights and uh, that's part of my deep commitment to, to doing that in whatever situation I find myself, whether it's a downtown east side organizer or an elected Vancouver city councillor. So this plan to have the, the housing and the centre would incorporate uh, services to the community as well, so mm -hmm. it, and therefore it would incorporate the existing services of the centre, which is now called community? Yes. I think the idea that the group is working on is that it could include a gymnasium, space for arts, uh, space for social services. It would have a, a range of facilities. Obviously the market's not very good right now. Um, there was a possibility that we could have received community uh, benefits had the project at Bidwell and Davy um, been uh, not the STIR project, but the STIR project meant all the community amenity uh, money went into the provision of 49 rental units and none of it came back into the community. And I don't think that the Davie Street community were aware that they were um, giving up that possibility of millions of dollars worth of benefits um, that went into the STIR project that could have gone to an LGBTQ centre. Which is why I voted against it. Well, when a developer approaches the city and says, we would like to build on this piece of land, Vancouver has something unique. It's called the CAC or, or a DCL development cost levy. And the developer agrees to provide the community with some community benefits. And they're clearly prescribed benefits. So, for instance, if a developer wanted to build in Chinatown, they could either give heritage density bonusing or they could give the community 20% of the project for low affordable housing, or they could give the community money to build a library either in the building or somewhere else. These are, or the child care center or more park space. These are some of the things that the CAC can go for. So this is a trade-off that they, they, what do they get for their, for giving these resources up? They get increased density. They can go up one or two more, a few more floors. So at the project at Bidwell and Davy Street, what the developer uh, agreed to do was to create 49 units of rather small rental housing. And because that was their deal, they, they did that. And because it was a spot rezoning, the broader community wasn't consulted about what they wanted. And they didn't realize the other options were to ask the developer to give that same amount of money for a, a LGBTQ center or a library or whatever the, else the West End might have wanted. So is this still on the, on the, uh, on the calendar for the future, uh, getting a developer to do exactly that? Yes, that's, that's a possibility. Right. I think people should pay attention to the development on Broughton Street. And are both parties committed to that, both COPE and uh, Vision Vancouver? Um, it was Vision Vancouver and COPE that supported the development of the STIR project. I supported it because I thought it would provide us with more affordable rental housing. I didn't want just more rental, I wanted a f real affordability in the rental. So I voted against the B Bidwell project because I thought the community had been really clear that what they wanted was not more rental. In fact, there's some vacancy in the rental stock in the West End, but what they wanted was an LGBTQ community center that was accessible. Well, I think that we've been talking in the queer community that we've needed a comprehensive one-stop shopping center for a long time and that we need housing for aging and elder uh, queer community members and that we need a center that's accessible to everyone. And what I was saying is that I was very disappointed that the Bidwell and Davy project went through because that provided the Davy Street community with 49 rather small units of market affordable housing, but it gave up the other community accessories 
up to a tune of, I think, $4.57 million that could have gone to building an LGBTQ community. And I think it's very important that the West End pays attention to the development that's happening at Broughton Street, uh, right kitty corner to the uh, Gordon Neighbourhood House. That project also will probably could be a stir project, which means again we let go of the millions of dollars of community accessible CICs uh, contributions that could go towards building a community center. I know that uh, Councillor Tim Stevenson is having a meeting with the mayor and uh, the community group that's working on the community center, but as he hasn't invited me to that meeting, I don't know what that discussion will be, but uh, generally speaking, Vision is very much supporting the STIR concept. Uh, and um, I think we need to make sure that we have a f rental where we need rental, but where we don't need rental, like in the West End, we use those CACs for other projects like libraries or a career center or other things like that that are, are more needed in that community. When uh, Janine Fuller came to speak and when uh, Herbert, Alan Herbert came to speak, they had no idea that in supporting the STIR project they were giving up about $4.57 million that could have gone to a, building a queer community center. I take it they know it now. I think they understand now. I think those that came before council and were part of the debate, both Councillor Anton and myself, were speaking very strongly about what the other options were. And so I think they now understand it. And uh, they need to really educate other people as to what, what the choices are. The question of building an LGBTQ centre really, I think, is tied to finding a developer who's willing to include such a project in the development and you, that we use the CICs to fund that, then there's still going to be the, the need to find the operational dollars, which can be significant. My understanding is one developer has provided about $2 million in startup funding. But it, it takes, uh, it can take $10 million or more do dollars to, to build a project if you've got uh, the developer willing to provide the CACs, you're well into the way, and then you, normally you go to the city and the province and the federal government for operational dollars, and that's another hurdle that will have to be overcome before it's operational. I think a lot of people have fought really hard for equal rights. So they fought for the right to get married, they fought for the right to be in the army, they fought for the right to get housing and to get jobs. Uh, at, and to be open as a lesbian, gay person, bisexual, transvestite, transgendered, you know, queer, queer ally, twin-spirited. And, you know, that's not enough. It's not enough just to have equality. We have to ask for dignity and respect for all members of our community. So where some of our community are getting elected, as I am to council, and some of our communities are, are the wealthiest developers in this city, where some of our, uh, our uh, electeds are achieving power in society, we shouldn't forget that the majority of people in the LGBTQ community in the world, or even in Canada, still live very closeted lives because it's not safe to be out. And I think it's responsibility for whoever you are in whatever position you have in the world, in whatever level of power you've achieved in the world, to really continue to work for queer rights and to openly say the words lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, transvestite, twin-spirited, queer, you know, to say all of the words because only by saying them and saying it's okay to say them is saying it's okay to be them and to be whoever you are and to have dignity in the world.